What if I tell you that you can copy the modern ATP forehand or even the backhand, whatever shot you want, without even hiring a coach? Well guys, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna explain to you the things that every single professional ATP player has in common on the forehand side, okay? And make sure you stay until the end of the video because we have something that I think you're gonna absolutely love. So stay until the end and we'll tell you exactly what it is. So, first of all, we're gonna talk about the commonalities of the things that professional tennis players do on the forehand side, okay? The new, the modern ATP forehand, okay? Because the forehand has been developing for the past decades and it's been a little bit different and it's been changing a little bit, but there are certain things that every single player on the ATP does, okay? Maybe, maybe not the single player, but let's say 90% of the players do, okay? And those are the things that we're going to be trying to fo be focusing on today, okay? So first of all, starting from the, for, uh, for the grip, what's the grip that professional tennis players on the ATP use the most? I would say that the most used one is probably the semi-western one, okay? You still see some players using a little more of an Easter one. Almost none of them use continental, okay? So that's something I would if I was you, I would try to avoid it, okay? Try to use semi-western. If, if you're a completely beginner, try to use semi-western, in my opinion. It's a very comfortable grip for you to start hitting more topspin. Maybe you want to move it a little more towards eastern. Some players still use a little more of a western grip, okay? But it's, again, a very, very low percentage of players, maybe like a 2% of players, okay? Most of them use either eastern, west, or semi-western grip, okay? So that's something that they have in common. What else do they have in common on the, on the modern ATP forehand, okay? Obviously, in the footwork, is something very simple. We have the split step, like on every ground stroke, okay? That's something that every single player does. And I find most amateur players completely miss this step, okay? And this is something extremely important if you want to improve your footwork, okay? Work on your split step, okay? Just get set up when the other one's hitting the ball. Make sure you split step. Make sure you jump with both feet at the same time, okay? To be able to read the other one's ball. Now, what else do they have in common? They have in common, first of all, the unit turn. How do they turn? They turn with the head of the racket up, okay? You see some players, okay? Especially now on the modern ATP forehand, coming a little more with the elbow a little bit higher and the racket a little bit lower, okay? I find it a little bit more complicated and if you are not very relaxed, it might be a little bit harder for you to do it, okay? So you will see most of them, how they open with the racket up on the first part of the movement. Then they might drop it maybe like feather, take it a little farther back to something different. But you see like, I could say 90% of them, they open with the head of the racket up here. And you see how also the face of the racket here turns instantly. And that's what we call closing the face of the racket, okay? That's gonna help you out, be able to uh, get way more tops in way easily. Okay, so as we see, they have the unit turn using the left hand on the racket here to push the racket back and fully turn the shoulders. Okay, so that's another commonality that they have. Now, what else do they do? They have a very compact backswing. Now, what do I mean by a compact backswing? Because this is something that I find a lot of players and even coaches, they don't fully understand. By a compact backswing, we mean that they keep the racket on the same side of the body, okay? So we gotta pretend that the body makes kind of like a line in here in wearing closed stand or if we're in open stance, my shoulders could be creating a line here. My body, my racket could never cross my body here, okay? That's something that maybe, especially on the WTA, you're gonna see more often. You'll see how the players take the racket all the way by here. If you see the racket is going across from me, what happens? Sometimes, if the other one plays with a little more pace and especially top spin, you're going to end up hitting a lot of balls late. It's going to be very tough for you to control. So it's very important for you to do a compact backswing, keeping the racket on the same side of the body. Now, by a compact backswing, I don't mean just turning the shoulders and leaving the racket here next to you, no. That's not a compact backswing. It's going to be very, very tough for you to create pace from there. Yes, you can create pace and some players, maybe like Fonini or so, they are able to generate so much pace with an extremely short backswing. But most players are going to find it a little bit more complicated, okay? So take the racket a little bit far back, okay? Whatever feel, feels comfortable for you. So for example, for me, the backswing is pretty short. For Sergey, the backswing is a little bit longer. He has great timing there, okay? I guess I don't do my forehand. My forehand is not the best one in the world. So what do I do? I take the racket a little bit shorter, but the racket stays on the same side of the body all the time, okay? Now, what else do these players have in common? Very, very important. When they release the, uh, the left hand from the racket, they leave the left hand 
up here and almost fully extended. There is some players that they live with a little bit more bent, kind of like round kind of stuff, okay? But most of them you will see them with the arm fully extended here and it's parallel to the baseline. It's not parallel to the net, it's parallel to a baseline, okay? Because this helps you out keeping the shoulders fully sideways here, okay? It's very, very important. And also when they release that racket, they make sure that the racket closes here, okay? You see how my strings are pointing to the ground. Why? Because this is going to help my racket stay close and be able to get, to get way more topspin, okay? Now, what else do they do? Now, we cover the backswing now, right? What do they do whenever they start moving forward? Well, very simple. As soon as they start going here, they start using the legs, they start uncoiling the body from the legs, and then the hips and the racket on the very last second keeps following, uh, keeps following this chain of motions, okay? Very important. This is where you're gonna be able to see if your wrist is relaxed or is not relaxed, okay? So if you find yourself going with a racket like this with the wrist, uh, with the wrist completely locked, your racket is gonna be here, right? Most of the times what you wanna do is you wanna leave the racket behind you and that's what they call the wrist lag. Now, very, very important, you don't wanna force it. You wanna keep it relaxed. So for example, if I'm here relaxed, as soon as I start the motion forward, my racket kind of drops back and my wrist kind of like gets the lag, but not because I'm doing it on purpose, just because I'm super relaxed, okay? That's why it's important, important to stay relaxed. Then what they do from here is they get under the ball most of the times, unless the ball is a little higher, maybe you wanna go a little more through it, okay? Most of the times they wanna, they get under the ball, and from here what they do is they come forward and upwards at the same time, okay? And as I go forward and up, what I'm doing is I'm turning the racket progressively, okay? You don't wanna do this, one of the main mistakes I see is they use this thing called the windshield wiper. I never had that in my life before when I've been, when I've been coached. They do this thing that they go like this. No, that's not what we're talking about, guys. We're talking about going forward and up and turning the racket as your arm goes forward and up, okay? Getting a full extension of the arm. Now, some players, same thing. As they hit, the elbow is a little more bent, a little more extended, but those are things that they are different from players. What we wanna focus on is, we wanna focus on the commonalities because these are the things that are gonna be easy for you to implement, okay? And then the last thing what they do is when they finish, they finish with the racket up, okay? Especially the elbow up here most of the times, okay? And then the racket kind of drops most of the times, especially for top swing balls. If the ball goes a little higher, maybe you finish a little bit higher, okay? But the arm finishes considerably high, maybe like around shoulder height or so, okay? Why? Because this makes sure that the arm came upwards all the way through, okay? So now these are the commonalities. Obviously there are so many things that certain players do and other players don't but those are not the things that are easy for you to uh, that, that you should be trying to implement because there are so many different things and could be very very complicated now i told you at the beginning of the video that i had something for you right we created this special course just for you we call it players checklist where we go on every single stroke and we do this exact process but i mean a little more developed and on each section, let's say you go to a forehand section, you are gonna get the full, uh, the full explanation of the drill, of the stroke. You're gonna have a whole checklist that you're gonna be able to implement by yourself, okay? So you're gonna be able to be your own coach. You're not gonna be able, need to hire any other coaches for technique again, because the only thing you're gonna need is a phone or a camera or something to record yourself. Go through a checklist that we're gonna do. We're gonna give you some PDFs where you're gonna be like, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing that. And we're gonna guide you through the process of exactly how to analyze yourself and how to improve your strokes. And this is something that you can even do from home right now. You don't even need to get into a course. So this is something that if you're stuck at home, you wanna improve your game, guys, this is an amazing program for you, okay? And we're gonna have it at a 50% discount right now just because we wanna help you out, okay? One week from now is gonna be a full price, so if you come one week later, I'm sorry guys, it's gonna be a full price. But if you are here right now, take advantage of it. It's the first link on the description and also the first comment below, okay? Go get it, it's gonna help you out so much. Plus, if you get it right now, we're giving you so many bonuses, okay? Like most common mistakes that we find people doing, drills of how to improve them, and a few myths that we think they're gonna help you out. And this program is gonna help you not no need to rely on a coach ever again, especially technique-wise, because you're gonna be able 
to learn and improve yourself and you can do it on your own time, okay? Even at home, okay? You're at home, you record yourself doing some shadow things, you go through the checklist, check those videos, be like, oh, it's told me to do this and that and that, I'm not doing it. Ah, huh, maybe I should try this and that. And you can start working on it from the comfort of your home, okay? So again, it's the first link on the description below, go get it, and I think you're gonna absolutely love it.